In the bike world, they say steel is real. And duh, seems pretty evident that steel is real. It exists. But uh, what do people mean when they say that? And what makes it so real? Number one, magnets stick to it. Just kidding, that's not a real reason why steel is real, but I'm keeping it on the list, and it's a good way to test if a frame is steel. Quick test. Number two, it has soul. That's mostly what people are talking about when they say steel is real. They mean the ride feel. So as you're riding the bike along, it transmits bumps and shit from the road up through the frame, and you feel it in your body. And so if it was perfectly stiff, you'd be taking a beating all day, but like the seat post and the frame and the tires and things have a little bit of give to them and it has a characteristic. So a steel frame is not as stiff as like a carbon fiber race bike is and a carbon fiber race bike might be more efficient. It might be lighter weight, it might be snappier, more responsive, but steel is real. It has a soul, it feels good under you. A lot of people just love the characteristics of a steel frame and they will only ride a steel frame even though the prices for other frames have become more modest and even though they have better performance technically or in reality sometimes. Who cares? Steel is real because it feels good. If you look at people who ride bikes on a bike tour, almost nobody is riding bikes made out of materials other than steel. It's really popular. If you're going to spend all day riding the bike, people tend to want to ride a steel bike. And also, there's other reasons for that, but that's probably the, one of the main reasons is that it feels good under your body for long, extended riding. And if you're the kind of rider who's just going out to have a good time and enjoy yourself, why wouldn't you want a frame that was going to feel good under you that had that lively spring to it that absorbed the road vibration and damped it just right? That's why people love steel frames so much. Number three is that it fails gracefully. Let's say you ride this baby and you crash real hard into a brick wall, right? You're probably screwed anyway, but if you look at the frame failure when that happens, you'll see that the whole frame is mostly the same shape and that usually what happens is this part of the down tube gets kind of crumpled up just a little bit. Uh, it doesn't snap in half. It doesn't just like uh, it doesn't break and leave some jagged part of a tube sticking straight out. Uh, it, it, it just kind of crumples or folds or bends a little bit. And uh, that's pretty nice in a, in a material. So if you look at uh, cars and the way that they have crumple zones and they're made to take an impact in a crash or something, it's all about like absorbing that energy and when you look at the way that carbon fiber, uh, generally the bikes that you buy and stuff, they're not, they're not death traps and they're not out like, you know, nobody's trying to hurt you. But if you can get carbon fiber to fail, it generally is very strong until the moment that it snaps and it snaps and it'll break. And sometimes it'll have some jagged, you know, uh, thing poking out and you know, you might be crashing your bike. It can be bad news. Uh, that's not always the case in every instance with carbon fiber, but, uh, steel, fails very gracefully. And so when it does fail, it usually, it's because you know you have a bunch of rust or there was a long, long developing crack. It takes a lot to get one of these to fail generally. And uh, it's just a very forgiving material that doesn't, uh, doesn't fail quickly. And when it does, it usually, you know, you hear some signs of it if it's like a cyclic fatigue. And if it's because of a crash or something, it's usually pretty safe and predictable. Number four is that fabrication is accessible. So let's say that you wanted to make an awesome titanium bike. That's a complicated proposition because when you go to weld it, titanium, when it's hot, it has an affinity for, for like stuff in the atmosphere and impurities and it wants to pull those into the weld. You get weld embrittlement. Your welds will fail. You could hurt yourself or others on the frame like that. There's a lot of reasons why making bikes out of titanium is very difficult. Uh, not to mention expensive. Carbon fiber has its own set of complications. If you want to make something simple out of carbon fiber, I'm not sure exactly how tedious or difficult that is, but steel has got to be the most accessible because you can, with, with a bench vise, hacksaws, hand files, some simple homebrew tools, and maybe like a flat surface like this table here, uh, and, then, and then you just need an oxyacetylene torch and you can get started making bikes. It's pretty accessible. You're not going to be fast. You're not going to make the best bikes in the world probably, but uh, you can make a quality, reliable, uh, bike frame out of steel with not a lot of tools. You don't need to 
uh, form the tubes. You don't need to heat treat them afterward. You don't, you know, there's just not a whole lot of special stuff that you need. You can buy little bits and, and, and little pieces like this from a bunch of different suppliers in the United States. And you can get started and off to the races with steel fabrication a lot easier than other ones. It's not hard to learn how to braise. And then it's pretty forgiving if you're not a great brazer. So like these are fillet braze joints or if you made a bike uh, that was uh, lugged fittings like my first bike frame it's it's not you know like you could roast the joint and it's prop like that's not great but it's probably not going to fail immediately if you use regular 4130 steel of like a reasonable wall thickness even if you kind of cook the joint it's probably not going to fail on you right away it's pretty forgiving it's pretty accessible for that reason uh, and then TIG welding even is easier if you wanted to do TIG welding I would say that's harder than brazing but it's easier than uh, TIG welding titanium or TIG welding aluminum and so uh, it's it's really the fabricator looking to get started steel is your best entry point. Number five, it's just an affordable material. Steel is not necessarily always the very cheapest material but uh, like you know let's say you're trying to build a bike frame like this quality but you don't want to spend a ton of money and you're not concerned about being the lightest weight ever you could just get straight gauge 4130 tubes and what that means is that in the bike industry usually they're using special bike tubing and it's butted so that means that the wall thickness on the end of the tube here and on the end of the tube here it's a little bit thicker wall there's more meat to the tube here but in the middle where it's, uh, it's not at that, that joint, it's a little bit thinner. And so that saves a little bit of weight and it changes the ride characteristic. And so let's say you're just trying to build a bike frame and you're trying to do it more affordably. You can use straight gauge tubing that's just the same wall thickness over the whole length. That'll save you a little bit of money. And you can get pretty good tubing. You know, the tubing to make a bike like this, even good steel tubing is gonna be under $500 for like some pretty nice stuff. And you could probably buy the tubing to do a frame like this for $100 or so, maybe less if you're using you know average stuff and if you're you, you know like if you got Chinese made uh, 4130 tubes you could probably do it you know even less than that and then you just have a handful of little pieces on here you know the dropouts can cost a lot if you get nice machined ones or it's less if you get cast or forged ones but anyway uh, it's pretty affordable aluminum I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it costs to buy a tube set when you're specialized or some huge company in quantity, but uh, I think for the small scale fabricator, there's a lot of associated costs with building with aluminum. Titanium is very expensive to build with. I don't know if it's, uh, you know, it's, it's hundreds of dollars minimum to build a titanium frame set. I think a lot of people, by the time they get the tubes they want and the machine bits they want, they're over $1,000 in materials. And that's not even, you know, paint and stuff. Uh, carbon fiber is, you know, notoriously expensive and uh, is labor intensive. And steel is just like a really good entry, entry point into if you want to get started making your own frames. And what a lot of bike frame builders do is they'll start with steel and they'll make bikes that are lugged or brazed. That's what I did. And then they might get into TIG welding, and TIG welding I think is a little bit harder, and then uh, you know you learn with that, and then you say, well hell, I might want to make a titanium frame. Well once you've TIG welded a bunch of steel frames, you know about bike design, you know about fabrication, and you know about welding, and now you can switch, you can graduate into titanium. It comes with its own challenges, but you might be ready to take on that next level of challenges because you have all the, you know, like the base coursework figured out. Aluminum welders too, like Mike Zancanato and a handful of other welders, uh, or bike frame builders who are welding in aluminum now, they started with, I think Zancanato, he started with lug steel frames, then TIG welded steel frames, then he started offering TIG welded aluminum frames, he's doing titanium frames, and so you can kind of like work your way up to it, but this is just the ground floor. This is like, you know, don't, uh, unless you're an experienced fabricator, don't start with something other than steel. It's just going to be extra work for you. You can graduate to that over time as you learn about the process generally. So the take home point really is that magnets will stick to your frame if you ride a steel bike and that's what makes it so good. So I hope you found the video really helpful and useful. I love steel frames. I love the way they ride. A lot of people do. Hopefully if you're watching you love them or you can get in the comments and tell me why I'm a jackass. I don't know what I'm talking about. Tell me about your favorite frame material and why. Regardless, hope you found the video useful. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one.